All right, so meet these two artists. We have Harry and we have Sally, and they both want to learn to draw figures. They spend some time doing a bit of anatomy, studying rib cages, and then later they spend 10 minutes drawing some figures, and Sally comes up with this, but Harry comes up with this. So Harry's disappointed and decides to watch some videos about gesture. And then he thinks, all I have to do is do more big swoopy lines like she did and draw quicker. But then he ends up with drawings like this. So what's the issue here? Like is, is Harry just less talented than Sally? So the difference actually is in how they approached their rib cage study. So Harry went really in depth. He learned the form of each rib and the name of each rib, which muscles attach onto each rib, Sally just learned a few super basic ideas about the rib cage and then did a bunch of drills to get good at them. So she learned that the sternum is on the front middle of the rib cage and is also the middle of the chest. So it's visible on the figure. And then below that is the rib cage arch. And to get to the bottom of that, you can just double the length of the sternum. And to get the angle of that across the bottom of the rib cage, it's roughly perpendicular to that sternum. Then overall, the rib cage is this kind of egg shape. It comes up a little bit higher in the back of the neck than the front, right? There's an opening at the top for the neck, which is a bit higher in the back than the front. And it kind of fills out the torso at this level here. So above this, the shoulder structure takes over, but it's kind of filling out the torso right here. You can probably feel it on your sides. So she got a pose like this and she goes, sternum, there's the sternum, okay come down that length again, that's gonna be the level of the bottom of the rib cage, and that's gonna be perpendicular to that sternum. The rib cage is gonna fill out the torso, right at this around here, and then it's gonna come up to the back of the neck, a little bit higher than in the front, and now I can visualize that rib cage. And she do did this again and again. Now, one other thing she knew was that the external obliques, which are the muscles on the sides of the torso, attach onto the sides of the bottom part of the rib cage and they come down to the top of the pelvis. And so she started to see, because she could see this rib cage egg shape, she could also see those external obliques and the fat and stuff around there bulging as the rib cage got closer to the pelvis on one side and stretching as the rib cage got further from the pelvis on the other side. And so she started to see the squash and stretch created by what the rib cage was doing relative to that pelvis. And that squash and stretch is actually also the heart of the gesture in these poses. And so what Sally was doing was applying that little bit of anatomy to her gesture drawings as well. So for Sally, gesture and anatomy were basically the same thing. Now, Harry was really different because he thought of anatomy as this really academic, knowledge-based thing where you have to memorize a bunch of stuff. And then he saw gesture as this like vague undefined thing about big swoopy curves. And so separating those out led to either really overworked stiff drawings or really kind of meaningless undefined drawings. So how can we train this like a sport like Sally did? Well, I'm gonna give you five steps, okay? So firstly, we're gonna to learn to visualize that rib cage form itself from lots of different angles, right? So it's got those characteristics I described before. If you want some help with this, there's a really cool 3D model by Scott Breton. I'll link to it below. You can put it up to different uh, angles and then you can draw the rib cage from lots of different angles. Now, once you're good with that, you need to start looking at it in poses, right? So you're gonna start with the sternum. Hold up your pencil to the middle of the chest, right? It's visible. It's an easy visible landmark. Starts from here, comes straight down the chest to the bottom of the chest. That's going to tell you, you double that, that's going to tell you how far down it comes. You go perpendicular to get roughly the bottom edge of it. You know it's going to fill out the torso here. You know it's going to come up to the back of the neck. And you start to be able to see this idea in lots of different poses. It's very exciting, but it's tricky and it requires lots of reps. It's like learning to shoot a basketball, right? You don't need to necessarily understand all the physics and the formulas and stuff behind shooting a basketball. You just need to know the basic ideas of the technique and then do a bunch of practice to get good at it. So I've taught these ideas to a lot of people and it's usually the same ideas that trip people up. So 
One thing is that the bottom of the rib cage isn't at this narrow bit of the waist, right? Where the indent is on the squashed up side, that's not the bottom of the rib cage, even though it feels like it should be, right? The bulging out thing is partly created by those obliques, those muscles that attach onto the sides of the rib cage. And they're not just on the bottom of the rib cage, they're attaching on the sides of it, right? So that bulging is coming off from a little bit above the bottom of the rib cage. The rib cage is gonna come down further than that indent. The other thing is, the torso seems to create these really nice big swoopy curves. And that makes people feel like the rib cage must also, it, it just feels very rubbery, very smooth, right? And so people often think that the rib cage is bending that same way. Now, even though the abs here might be creating a nice curve. And because the rib cage has got that egg shape, you know, it might be creating a nice curve on that stretched outside. You can still see, once you start seeing this, that the basic rigid egg shape stays there. It's always there. And that angle across the rib cage stays perpendicular to the sternum. It doesn't start to like bend back with the torso. There's a little bit of flexibility in the rib cage, but for this purpose, it's way easier and better just to think of it as rigid and unchanging. And the next thing to do is really emphasize that squashing and stretching. So you can see things getting pulled in here by the rib cage and then the midsection having to bulge out to get back to the pelvis. Now, to really understand the whole thing that's happening with this squashing and stretching, you, pr you do need to be able to visualize and see some of the pelvis as well, and I'll make another video about that. But even just with this rib cage egg idea, you should be able to start to notice the squashing and stretching of the midsection as it comes back for the pelvis. And you can emphasize that in your drawing. So when you're doing your drawings, some of the time you'll throw down like a rough egg shape based on what on this, these exercises we're doing here, but sometimes you don't even need that. You're just seeing how it's pushing things out uh, on the one side and stretching things out on one side, how it's squashing things down on the other side and bringing that out and emphasizing it in your drawings. And the last thing is the shoulders, right? So when you're thinking about what's the rib cage doing, what's its angle, focus on the sternum, don't think about the shoulders because the shoulders can move up and down independently of each other and independently of the rib cage. So I can completely change the shoulder angle while the rib cage, my rib cage isn't moving. And so what happens often is that like with the shoulders doing this, you know, people start to think, oh, the rib cage is like bending at the top, you know, but no, this is just the shoulder structure now changing while the rib cage is remaining the same. So the anchor, the sanity check is always the sternum, right? That is gonna tell you what the rib cage is doing, even as the shoulders do all kinds of crazy stuff around it. So don't worry about the shoulder angle, worry about the sternum angle, and then think of the shoulders as independent. And actually, it's gonna be really cool later on, because you're gonna to start to see the squash and stretch created by the movement of the shoulder versus the rib cage. So figure drawing is about bringing together a few different ideas, like from anatomy, from gesture, from simplifying forms, from simplifying shapes of light and dark, in other words, your values. But it doesn't need to be the complex side of each of those skills. It can be the simpler ideas from each of those skills brought together in a meaningful way, like I described in this video. And so the key then is to keep touching on the simple sides of these ideas, but doing exercises and drills for them and then bringing them back into your figure drawing. And that is what we do in our study group, right? So I didn't used to draw like this, I used to draw like this, but you just keep doing these simple exercises and you're gonna get there. Here's another case study, this is Scott. Scott was, I think about 18 months ago, drawing like this and then studied with us on our course and kept practicing and got to a point that looked like this, which is such a great improvement. He worked really hard. And then with our study group, started to build more specific skills. So Scott still had some struggles with like foreshortened forms and simplifying the forms of the figure. In October, we focused on that in our study group. We all did exercises together to build those simple skills. And then Scott started to conquer that aspect of figure drawing too. 
So really focusing down on individual skill set and doing it together with other people is a powerful combo. And that's what we do in our study group. We have a deal on membership right now. Check out the link below and I hope to see you in there. Also, I've got another video on this topic about seeing these simple forms in the figure on the screen. So if you want to go check that out, I'll see you there too.